Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you Wednesday, September 9th. Bank of Canada today. Europe looks pretty quiet. We do have Swiss unemployment, which has held astoundingly at 3.4% during all this COVID stuff. It's uh, almost hysterical how well uh, the Swiss run their country. 3.4%. Anyway, it's not going to move dollar Swiss or euro Swiss, so let's not even bother uh, talking about that. Let's go to euro. We talked about the turn yesterday. It was pretty bumpy, um, to be fair. Couldn't quite... Um, Couldn't quite get back over 05 yesterday after, so we were down to 70, up to 05, down to 58. Now here we are at 80. ECB is obviously on Thursday. We have this low here at 54, which is important. But as some of our other uh, followers noted that I agree with, 117.08 is really the killer key point. Um, the market is crowded here. Um, Long euro, short dollars. Let's see what happens. Core short going into uh, ECB makes sense uh, to us. Euro yen was really the the winner, although again it was bumpy, right? This bar in particular annoyed the fuck out of me. Uh, 125.22 given, and then we had this hourly bar here up to 45 shook us out a little bit we sold through 40 we sold through 30 and then we had to really trim because of this bar here <coughs> which you know looks stupid in hindsight but you know it is what it is Urien took a big splash um, and now also it's just sitting here 124.43 now is triple bottom Although today looks like we're in for a bit of a bounce. Uh, we're, we got slaughtered at the open and risk, and then we've bounced back pretty healthily. Uh, so not much to do here. If you are short from yesterday, you might want to trim a little bit. Um, but core short seems to be the way, seems to be the, the correct positioning. Sterling Yen with the Brexit worries and with the cable price action crushed dollars are uh, finally right 50% decline in GDP hmm this was your bingo line here 75 was the point never looked back we talked about it yesterday you have these two lines that were in play. I won't draw the downside line. Now we're going to wait and see what happens up at the figure. Again, we're a little bit more risk on than one would think. Um, so as far as a tactical trade today, we want to wait and see what happens at the figure. The problem with buying a dip today is people are long from yesterday, and, and it's kind of an obvious trade with that minus 50% GDP print. Um, so there might be some weak hands and dollars are. Let's see what happens up at the figure. Dollar max did not like it up there, right? Printed all the way up to 95, but then bang, a little flipsy doodle. Um, I guess this is like endemic of the change in risk parameters overnight. So again, just be aware. Um, S&P's bounced pretty hard, up 40 handles from the lows. Aussie also couldn't really cope. Same type of chart. This trend line. is in play not really right back up above it kinda look 
looks spooky. Here are Aussie as well. We get a big option expiry next week in uh, in the stock market. You kind of wonder if this is uh, this here is the tradable low 3300. Now we're 50 handles above. Uh, hmm. Interesting. It is a Wednesday, so Wednesdays would typically be sort of the bounce day. Kiwi, same chart. Dollar Cat, same chart. BOC today uh, in Canada. Crude crushed uh, 3660. Can't imagine the BOC is going to say anything remotely hawkish. Um, but your support is 3160, so you got a ways to go down there. As this dribbles and dances in the middle of nowhere, you kind of have to just sort of trade the news. So you want to prepare mentally for what you think might happen and then just trade the news. This is a chart that I like. Gold. <clears throat> we, we printed 1911. We talked about 1907 as sort of a bingo number. This sort of matches up with the 11708 in Euro. If we do get a dollar squeeze, uh, gold will be susceptible to that. Uh, keep an eye on this down here. We will be we'll be playing around if we break down through 119.10. Tesla down 20%. The 50% mark from 530 is what? 270, 265. Another 50 bucks, not a big deal, right? It's just another 20%. We had a 20% down day yesterday. Um, Tesla looks like crap. If you're a buyer, you want to wait for between 200 and 250, I think. Apple, you can probably play around a little bit earlier. We like buying this at 100. Another 10% for Apple as well. Uh, we'll see. Let's look at ZB. Let's look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin was slopping around down at 10,000, but now it's bounced a bit. We picked some of these coins up yesterday. Um, we're running some longs tactically as well as we're running some longs long term in the long term book. We actually have a tactical long position here, which just means it's a tradable position. Um, we like Bitcoin higher. Uh, what else? What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, ZB. Where are you? Let's put this on the dailies. You see it's a slow downtrend here. We, we had this sort of painful move up to 178.15. Yesterday was like a sort of a sloppy up day, but didn't really like it. We've got um, we've got an auction on the tenth that's definitely worth watching. I'd like going into that auction short. Obviously, we're already core short, uh, but the tactical book should add to shorts today. If risk uh, pops, this thing might go lower. So keep an eye on ZB. Uh, the long bond. We like shorting bonds. We like higher rates. This is a medium to long term position. So you can trade it on the short side, but when you say when I say trade it, you're waiting for three, four handle moves on the upside as a fade. And then you probably everyone has to smash this thing down through um through one seventy four twenty three. So on the um, on the yield that's through 153 so we're watching this as well so keep an eye on uh, ZB anyway at the open here we don't have much to do um, we had some volatility overnight there are no close levels per se we are watching this gold downside we'll be taking a closer look at dollar cat as the BOC approaches um, and core short euro seems to be the way. Good luck out there, people. Talk to you tomorrow.